Friday night and I'm here for the Kaywood Craft Festival, the 25th anniversary of this magnificent event. Tonight, the main reason is the prize giving to all the winners, seconds and the thirds, they're all amongst us tonight. But it's so packed in here, I've had to come in by the back door, donned my jacket and raring to go. The atmosphere is absolutely electric. It's so electrifying, it's better than the TV awards, this. <laughs> so then the first award is for the children's class. This has been sponsored by Douglas and uh, Marjorie Katanak. And in third place, uh, we have Chloe Mays. In second place, we have a shell picture uh, by Lucy Bucktrout. Well done. Well done, Lucy. And the prize for first place goes to a picture entitled Camping by Amy Hurdle. Once again, with many thanks for the, the inspiration that, that has gone behind this craft festival over so many years and the loyal industry of so many people who have been involved, I hand over now to the Chairman of the Parish Council, Mike Cowling, to make the final three awards. The Best in Show Children's Award is awarded to Rose Lipsy Barnes. The 25th anniversary prize for somebody who's over 16, an adult, is awarded to, and we'll keep it in the family, Bev Lipsy. Um, the Supreme Award, I guess, it's not the Great Yorkshire Show, so we can't have uh, uh, Champion of Champions. Well, I suppose he is. He's put something in every uh, year for the last 25 years. And uh, the Best in Show is awarded to Norman Holroyd. Hey! I'm going to keep my piece very brief. Um, yes, I'm stepping down after I think it's five years. But can I just remind you, there's some people who were here on the original committee, and they're still on. That's 25 years, so I think they deserve a bigger clap than I do. Um, and rather than say any more, I think all my feelings have been summed up in my chairman's welcome. So when you hand over your £3.50, you get your brochure, <laughs> you can read all my thoughts and, dare I say, all my thanks. So once again, thank you very much for coming this evening. Thanks very much. I'm here in the marquee and I'm with Michael. Michael, what are you doing with a piece of wood? Turning lace bobbins. Oh. My good lady. So how many are you expecting to sell over the course of the day? 
Oh, it's debatable because lace bob is a very like, specialised item. I'll maybe make about 20 today. Yeah. Great. So, um, yeah. yeah, but the, the, it depends on the design, how long they take to make. You know, they can take 10 minutes or they can take 30 minutes. And how long have you been coming to the Kaywood Festival? This is the first time I've been. We've got some very good friends, Mike and Joe Weldon, who are involved with the organisation of it. And we've known them for years and they mentioned it to us and um, here we are. Here at the festival, I've managed to find the gentleman that started the whole thing here at Kaywood, and that's Ron Woodhouse. Hello, Ron. Hi. Tell us a little bit about how it all started. How did you get it going? It, it was a follow-on, actually. Um, Dot, who was anti-Dot to all of us, uh, came a year or two before this started and said, can we do some fundraising? The church is always trying to... And we, we said, OK, well... Uh, we have a metal detector hunt and we had a big metal detector hunt before the flood bank went in. The flood bank was going to cause all upsets along the waterfront uh, and we got permission from the ar um, archaeologists to do a metal detector hunt. We found a few coins in the church, one of which was a, a sovereign, uh, and we buried some old coins and other tokens and made some prizes and then invited metal detectors. It was chaos. The in the church hall when we opened the door a crowd of people came rushing in to book in and take part in it and it was a good day the best find was a tiny little silver penny um, I forget the age of it but the man that found it was absolutely delighted and quite a number of other things were found as well the following year Doc came back and said think of something else so, Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> what can we do? So, what can we do? And I, I like art and craft. So how about if we have a craft festival and we have a competition and we put them in the church, put some things around the church, and the competition has grown from there and the number of stalls that are here have grown from there as well. It, it seems to be going well. well 25 years, 25th, 25th anniversary. 25th anniversary. How do you it's, feel about the 25th anniversary? It's, <laughs> It's great to see that it's still going. I mean, we really didn't think there has been talk about it's, it's too big, it's whatever. It's now a full weekend. And when we first started, I think it was a one day festival, just a bank holiday day. But now it's a full weekend and it's good. Everybody seems to be enjoying it. And with weather like we've got today, what more can you ask for? What's your name, by the way? Tom. Hello, Tom. And the young lady? Jill. Jill, great. So you here for three days? We are, yeah. yeah. Doing good business? Yeah, it is, yeah. yeah. I'll tell you what, me eating this. Mm -hmm. Best part of the day, this. Best part of the day. Oh, hi guys. Sorry, I'm supposed to be working, mate. But it's lovely ice cream. Do I have to carry on? I'm here with Jim Crennell and he's the guy with all these fabulous sweets. Hi Jim, how are you doing? Hi, thank you. Well, fine, thank you. Good. Um, so are there any of these sweets homemade? Yes, so you make all the fudges, the range of fudges down here, all homemade, and the toffees uh, down here. Uh, the rest of the old-fashioned sweets we source out from... Old-fashioned sweets? Yes. Can I see the old-fashioned sweets? Yeah, the old coconut mushrooms, chewing nuts. Oh, I remember the mushrooms, Jim. They look absolutely fantastic. Tastes Jim, good as well. Try tastes one. good as well. Try can I, one. Can I? I'm, I won't do it with my hands. I'll do that. Look. Thanks, Jim. <laughs> this is Chris from the Central Yorkshire Metal Detecting Club. Hi, Chris. How are you doing? Hi, all. Well, yeah, not bad, thank you. Good. Can you explain to me what is this stall all actually about? Um, this is part of our uh, stall we have today. This is. Uh, all the finds are metal finds from the Kaywood area. Um, we've got there's, there's quite a lot of uh, footage. We've got about 40 foot of uh, metal detecting finds, and the, these finds have been built up over about an eight-year period. So, do people actually have a go? Do they have a go at doing it? The metal detecting? Yeah, sure. It's quite a select hobby. Uh, the, the, the metal detecting machines are quite expensive, but uh, once you've got one, they can last quite a few years, probably around 10 years. You know, so they're, they're quite good actually. Mm. Uh, but we can find all sorts of like gold coins, silver coins, mus yeah, got musket shot. We've got selection. all periods, right yeah. from Celtic times right up until modern day. Um, it, it's, a, it's a very, very gripping hobby. Uh, it's superb. Would, would, would you like to have a gold one? Me? Yeah. 
Okay, I'll give it a go. Okay, there we go. Uh, this is the metal detector wheel. Uh, okay. All you basically do is put the headphones on and just listen to the sounds. And when you go over a piece of metal, right, uh, I'll put my arm just like that. Yeah, I? just hold it like that. Right. I've heard a bleep. Bleep. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'll tell you what. This is fantastic. I think it's a new career. I'm here with John Katanak, chairman of the Kaywood Craft Festival. John, how's it going today so far? I'm really, really pleased. I think the thing that I wanted to get through was a day without any rain. And you've got it. And we've got it. In fact, um, as you can see, I'm having to wear something to keep the sun off my head. So should I, really. I'm burning here. It's a great day. What a great... You must be very happy with today. Very, very happy because don't forget that we've had an absolutely incredibly bad summer lots of rain, there's been loads of festivals that have had to actually cancel yes. because the car parks are waterlogged. Yeah. Ours aren't. Um, as I say, I'm just absolutely delighted with the turnout. Um, and I think, you know, when you've got something like this, what's better? Glass of Pims, ice cream, yeah. it's magic. We're at the bandstand and I'm with Teresa, who's going to be performing in about two, about half an hour's time. Teresa, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. Right, so tell me about your instrument. Um, this is a, called a flugelhorn. It's one of the many instruments in a brass band. As you can see, there's around about between 24 to 30 instruments that play in each session. Um, all of different sort of tones and they all blend together to make the band sound. It's a beautiful sound. Absolutely. <laughs> I've heard a little bit of already, folks. A little bit that I've heard is fantastic. <laughs> Teresa, do you need this instrument? No, no, that's just a, just a mute. Oh, I'll just put it down then. Right, Teresa, take it away. I'll just practice. Practice, that's it. I'm here with the guys from the York City Levy. Hello, men. Hello, How are you doing? Morning, thank you I, feel, I feel a bit overpowered here with all these swords and all these armour. Um, guys, just tell me a bit, first of all, about what you do. We're basically a 15th century enactment group, so what that means is we try to sort of portray uh, the, the lives of everyday people from the city of York from round about the year. Uh, 1440 to about 1480, so pretty much contemporary with the time of Kaywood Castle itself. Now, as well as the military side of things, which people seem to think, you know, reenactment, it's about military, it's about fighting, all the rest of it. You know, I mean, at the end of the day, there was an awful lot of fighting at the time, but for the most point, for the, you know, for everyday people, what it really came down to was getting on with their normal lives, looking after the farms, looking after the children, making a living. So for the most part, a lot of our group is based around portraying the people of the times. So here, for example, at the weekend, you know, we're sort of doing displays of, of like medieval farming techniques, but we'll, you know, we'll also be doing sort of, you know, maybe cloth making displays, uh, leather working, doctoring, um, you, know, you, know, you know, maybe sort of talks about how women sort of cope with childbirth at the time. So, you know, it's like, so pretty much the sort of spectrum of like sort of, sort of civilian life for the medieval period. I was just looking at this gentleman's armour here, and it is absolute. It's obviously it's quite heavy. Um, not really. It, it, um, no, it, now I'm touching it. It's not that heavy, is it? No, it, it's, it's comfortable. It, it's, it's very, very comfortable. It is. Uh, what I'm wearing at the moment is the most common type of armour worn by soldiers during what is now known as the Wars of the Roses. 
uh, and this is called a padded jack. It's made up of 30 layers of linen, all hand stitched, and then you put the knots in to actually yeah. hold the individual layers together. And it's very, very effective against slashes and, uh, and yeah. uh, thrusts. So if I punch you, it's all right? You can punch me harder than that if you want. I might get one of these myself. <laughs> it looks really good though. So let's talk to these guys, this gentleman over here. And uh, can you tell us a bit, I call it a pole, but obviously I yes, don't know what it is, so you can tell us all about this. What it is, this is, a, this is a bill, and basically it started off as the agricultural tool, the kind of thing you would use for cutting back trees, cutting hedges. You just have the plain old hooked blade on a short stick. Obviously in times of war, on a longer stick, it becomes a very effective weapon. You've got a fair degree of reach. If I was to bring it back over my shoulder and bring it down, if that were you, I could probably cut you from your shoulder to your waist. Well, I'm not going to argue with you. Fair enough, then. No, <laughs> and none of you guys. I'm going to get out of here. Thanks, guys, for talking Cheers, to thank me. thank you very much. Right, Bye-bye. I'm here at the Shooting Stars Circus Skills for the kids. Loads for kids here at Kaywood Craft Festival. And I'm going to try and do this. The kids can do it. See if I can do it. Ready? I'm going to do it. I'm going to just go over and see if I can join this. Hello. Hi. Can you show me how to uh, a, a, a start it off? Is it like this? Like that, yeah. Oh, right, OK. Oh, OK. Make sure you hit the top bit and not the bottom bit. Top bit, not the bottom bit. Right. I'll do it again. What's your name, by the way? Katie. Hello, Katie. Right, we're going to do it together, are we? Ready? One, two, three. <laughs> Katie can do it. Whilst you're here at the festival, why not try a different way method of transport? On the miniature railway, off we go. <laughs> Woo! Here we go. <laughs> Fantastic, absolutely. And a nice bit of steam as well as you're going along. Great job. That was really good. It's well worth going on the miniature railway. It's a fantastic experience. I thought love was only true in fairy tales. And for someone else, but not for me. Love was out to get me. That's the way it seemed. Disappointment taunted all my pain. And then I saw her face Well, I'm a believer Not a trace A daddy by my I'm in love Ooh, I'm a believer And a believer If I try So, WYSIWYG, 
guys, come and join me each side of me. Come and join me. So, WYSIWYG, how did you come by the name? What's your name first? What's your name? Dave. Dave, hi, yeah. Dave. Nice to meet yeah. you. Um, so how did you come across the name of WYSIWYG? It's an anagram. It's right. What you see is what you get. It's a computer anagram. So we just thought oh. it was quite good because it's just the two of us. And what you see, this is what you get. So guys, how long have you been coming to Kaywood Craft Festival? About five years now. Five years? Five years, yes. Five years, yeah. wow. Are you playing all day today? Yes, we're playing all day today, yes. Right, uh, brilliant. This is only the second year that we've